The attacks on 9-11 forever changed this country, but the infrastructure in two American cities changed forever. New York began that massive search and recovery mission. Washington shifted into war footing. Sharon Pratt is the former mayor of Washington, D.C., and she joins us now. And, and Sharon, you and I have known each other for decades. We have never, ever talked about this. You said you were actually at the airport getting ready to, to get on the plane or get off the plane, and then what happened? To, to get on the plane. Uh, you know, I had not long ago decided to buy a co-op in New York. My youngest daughter was there, and we were going to buy something together, which we did. And uh, she was waiting for uh, Time Warner to install television that morning, uh, was returning a rental car. You know, and then the word came out that they were having trouble with their radar system in New York. Uh, that was how it was interpreted on the news when I first got it. And at any rate, I was about to enter the airport when I saw the black puff of smoke coming from the Pentagon, at which point you didn't have to be too bright to figure out what might be going on. You knew the airport potentially could be a target. So I ran as fast as I could to get a cab and get out of there. And I told the cab driver, head east. Uh, he said, I said, head to the hood. <laughs> because I knew that if we headed east, we'd be safe. Uh, and then, you know, tried to reach my daughter and niece who were in New York. Sharon, it, it's fascinating as we are now looking back at 9-11, 20 years later, people ask me, you know, what it was like in Washington. And I told them that it was different than New York because Washington shifted almost overnight into a war footing. And if you remember, the, the fighter jets were scrambled over the city. Uh, you could hear the sonic booms. Uh, there were tanks uh, around, around the city. Had you ever seen anything like this in Washington, D.C., where we literally overnight shifted from being a sleepy southern town into a town that possibly might have been under attack? No, we were poised to do it, actually, when I was in office with the Persian Gulf War, because uh, I think it was Webster came to my office as the head of FBI and basically said, look, all but said, I, we're in charge because, you know, we're fearful of retribution, uh, but never to the degree that we experience in the wake of September the 11th. Having also being between New York and Washington, I can tell you it was far worse, actually, in New York. There were fighter jets everywhere, right in our neighborhood, everywhere. And just the pain was palpable in New York. You know, pictures, family photos up and down where we lived, everywhere, all the way down to Wall Street. People searching for family members who could possibly have survived uh, the, the Twin Towers. Um, we were frightened uh, when I was trying to get out of uh, air, the airport to head it towards East Georgia Avenue to head up towards home. Um, you could see people exiting from government buildings and you could see the panic, uh, but it wasn't nearly, it was as horrible as it was here. It was, it was terrible in New York. Yeah, I too was in, in both cities. Uh, I was anchoring uh, the news here for the ABC station at the time, but also then went up to New York uh, to the World Trade Center site. And, and you're right. There was that palpable feeling of grief, but something else was different about the Pentagon attack that I learned just yesterday, which was because the plane literally eviscerated all of the evidence inside the Pentagon, they did not even have the opportunity to think about burying their loved ones. It was a DNA event, and, and that was something that 20 years later I found out just yesterday. Are you still learning tidbits of things that you didn't know 20 years ago? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I think it was, uh, well, it was true, I think, both places, don't you? I mean, uh, um, that type of attack and uh, the destruction of any remnants of life uh, was so complete and so unexpected. Um, and I think it's very, always been hard to absorb it. Uh, it seems surreal. Uh, but if you actually were witnessing it, as people did, with the Pentagon here in Washington and the fear that the flight was headed towards uh, the White House or the Capitol, um, but they actually could see it in New York. That's what really shook them. They saw those planes, you know, they could see it, those planes coming in and with, you know, it, you know, with such, with such temerity, 
uh, and America seemed disarmed in her ability to respond to that. I think that was so unsettling. Sharon, you and I have both lived through the changes of Washington after the Oklahoma City bombing and now after 9-11. Do you think we will ever get back to the innocence of, of America that was back in, in, in the late 80s, uh, where you could actually walk down Pennsylvania Avenue and take a picture in front of the White House, or for that matter, drive past the Capitol and, and drive up again to the circle? I mean, those days are forever gone. Those days are forever gone. And I mean, I, to be honest with you, Dell, I. I'd go back to, you know, to the period of September the 11th, where we, at least as a nation, were unified um, and where there was a collective will and resolve to help each other and support each other. We had the same experience in the wake of September the 6th, I mean, no, January the 6th. I mean, everything was barricaded off and here we are feeling angst and discomfort and concern about our fellow Americans. That is a very unsettling feeling. After September 11th, they came down both houses of Congress to the front of the Capitol and sang, God bless America. Sharon Pratt, former mayor of Washington, D.C., my dear friend. Mayor, as always, thanks for being with us.